Hello! Jacob here again, today bringing you some hidden Steam deals. So, the Steam Winter Sale for 2017 is upon us, and there are thousands of games on Steam on sale. And it can be quite difficult to uh, kind of tr trudge through it all and find the good deals that are out there, so I've done a little bit of digging, and I've picked out five games today, which uh, have got a pretty decent discount, and I'm actually... Uh, pretty good. Well, it's one of them that's kind of a bit okay. The rest are all pretty good. And they've also got pretty steep discounts. So I've done the hard work for you. So without further ado, here are my five picks for hidden Steam deals in the Steam sale 2017. Okay, so my first pick for the Steam hidden deals is a game that goes by the name of Valley. Now, this is a game which came out in August 2016, developed by Blue Isle Studios, and it is currently 80% off in the Steam sale. So it's $20 down to $3.99, or £15 down to $2.99. Now this is a game which I kind of bought, I kind of heard a little bit about it, but I didn't know a ton about it before I bought it, but I saw the fairly steep discount, I thought I'd give it a try. And it's actually uh, pretty good, this game. I suppose the best way to describe it is a kind of first-person exploration platformer, I guess. It's kind of a, a little bit of a weird little game, this one. It's uh, certainly quite unique. There's not really a whole lot else really like it. But the game kind of starts off where uh, you're playing as an archaeologist and you're looking for an ancient artifact called the Light Seed. And you, re you travel to the um, Rocky Mountains in Canada to kind of search for this artifact. And once you get there, you discover that it's actually already been explored, and uh, the people exploring it had a certain device called the leaf uh, suit. So you put this leaf suit on that you find, and lets you gives you uh, the ability to run really fast and also jump quite high as well. As you progress through the game, you also get uh, unlock new abilities as well. So you get a double jump later on, and uh, also I played I played about an hour of the game. I didn't play it all the way through, but I played a decent amount of it. And later on, you do get a little grappling hook as well. And actually, I had a quite a surprising amount of fun playing through this game. Uh, the game is mostly focused on kind of exploration and platforming. There is a little bit of combat. Uh, if you, uh, there might be a little bit of footage where I'm fighting these kind of weird, wispy kind of enemies. But the game is mostly, at least uh, in my playtime, it's mostly focused on just kind of exploring and jumping around. Now, what makes this game quite fun, I think, is the just the kind of sheer size of the levels. The levels are actually really, really large. And they kind of let you explore, and there are little little collectibles you can find as well as you go along. Uh, you can find acorns, which you can use to open doors, which uh, kind of let you access extra areas and stuff. Um, yeah, this is actually a really, really fun little game, especially for the uh, price. Like I said, the steep discount, I think this game is definitely worth checking out for, for the price. Uh, the character controls really well, like I said, you know, including these large jumps over these like big valleys. It's not like play play over there. Uh, you know, running down like really steep hills, getting loads of speed, and jumping over these valleys, and uh, there were quite, actually some pretty decent platforming sections as well. Even though the game is first person, that, the platforming is actually quite solid. So there are certain sections where you're kind of platforming from kind of rock to rock, and if you fall fall down, obviously you die. So you know, when you're using your ability to double jump and using this hook to kind of swing across like large valleys and stuff. It's actually uh, you know it's, it's a lot of fun, and the controls are, are pretty much spot on. The thing that actually kind of surprised about this game as well is it actually has a pretty decent story. And I obviously haven't finished the game, but uh, as you kind of play through the game, uh, you have a little on the leaf on the leaf uh, suit that you get in the game. There's a little kind of audio recording that plays every now and then to kind of fill you in on the story, and it kind of takes you back to when the area was previously explored in uh, the 1940s. And there's a woman who kind of explains the story, and there's also a scientist as well who kind of does a little bit of explaining. And it's actually really well done, and also you can you find notes in the world as well, which kind of uh, flesh out the backstory a bit. It's actually really surprised by Valley. It's actually like a really really fun little game. Uh, so the only real complaints is that the game is like it's not really that difficult. It's mostly focused on kind of ex exploring and jumping around, and there isn't really much combat or anything like that. But if you don't really mind, if you, if you kind of enjoy just kind of exploring a really kind of vast, interesting world with some bit, little bit of platforming, a little bit of combat thrown in, then. Valley's a pretty decent pickup, and yeah, like I said, it is 80% off on Steam, so definitely worth checking out at 80% off, which is uh, three, uh, four dollars or three pounds. So yeah, that's Valley. Pretty, pretty good little game. I enjoyed it. So, for my second Steam hidden deal, I've gone with Tembo the Badass Elephant. So this is a game which is 75% off on Steam. It is. 
fifteen dollars down to three dollars seventy nine uh, seventy four, or nine pounds ninety nine down to two pounds forty nine. Now, this is a 2D platformer developed by Game Freak, of course, most famous for the Pokemon games. And of course, you play as Tembo the Badass Elephant. Now, in this game, uh, it's kind of a fairly casual pla kind of platformer, really. And uh, there isn't really much of a story, and there's like some weird alien invasion. And uh, you're kind of brought in to kind of save the day, basically. And you go around killing these weird people with these kind of weird these kind of weird purple dudes with these masks on as you go through the levels but it's kind of irrelevant really, it's kind of just a basic setup um, what I like about this game is the, I suppose the actual visual style of the game, the game has a, a really nice kind of look to it, it has a, uh, a nice kind of mix of kind of 2D and 3D as you can see the kind of tembo and the kind of the characters in the game are kind of you know kind of 2D drawn sprite but the actual world is actually 3D, it's like 2.5D so the game has like a really nice nice look to it and uh, the actual levels are really uh, well designed as well. There's lots of uh, little secrets. As you can see, as you work away through the levels, like there are these little people you have to save. But they're usually kind of hidden in kind of weird crevices and things. So there's lots of reason to explore, uh, explore the levels. And the levels themselves are actually quite large. So there's kind of lots of little hidden passages you can go down when you're kind of going through the main path. Although the actual, you know, the levels themselves are linear, but usually lots of little secrets to find. Now Tempo himself actually has quite a few different moves you can pull off. You can you can do like a little float when you jump, and you can slide, and you can uh, dash, and you can roll around. So the, uh, there's quite a lot of moves you can do, which is quite fun. It gives you a nice bit of variety, and you can actually shoot water out of your trunk as well. So there are certain parts of the game where there's fire, and you have to, the only way to get past the fire is to obviously put it out using the uh, water from the trunk. But the, the water does run out, so you have to kind of refill and on these little stations as you go through. And uh, every time you beat a level... Uh, you actually get a little score based on how many kind of people you save, and also you can see at the top there's a, a, a certain number of enemies that you've killed in the, in the level. So you can kind of go through and try and, try and kill every enemy in the level as well if you want. So the actual levels themselves are fairly short, about 10 minutes long each, and I don't think the game itself, itself is actually that long. It's probably only a few hours long, but um, there is a little bit of replay value if you want to kind of go back and find all the secrets and stuff and kind of explore the levels. Um, yeah, this is a, a pretty good little game, I think. It's nothing amazing uh, it's actually pretty easy uh, I died a couple of times but you can see there we got uh, you collect these peanuts as you go through the level once you collect a certain number of peanuts you actually get an extra life so um, there's not really much of a punishment for dying either you just go back we go back to a checkpoint and lose, lose a little bit of progress so it's a fairly uh, laid-back game and fairly casual but it's a lot of fun and it is uh, it's got a certain sense of style I suppose that you don't really see with other games that often it's, it's cute, I like this game quite a bit. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, there's not really a whole lot else to really say about this one, to be honest. Other than, uh, yeah, I think for 75% off, it's probably worth checking out. Uh, decent little plat. If, you know, if you like platformers, this is definitely going to do the job. It's a, it's a really nice one. And yeah, it is 75% off, so it's pretty cheap. So yeah, check that one out. That's uh, Tembo the Badass Elephant. 75% off. Not bad. Right, so for pick number three, I have gone with Stories, The Path of Destinies. Now this one caught my eye because of the huge discount. This one is currently 90% off on Steam. It is $1.49 down from $15, or £1.09 down from £10.99. So I played a good hour or so of this game, and I came away reasonably impressed. Um... It's a pretty decent game, this one, but nothing amazing. But uh, the basic setup is that you're playing as a character called Reynard, I think he was called, and your brother was is killed at the beginning of the game. There's like a there's like a weird war going on between uh, some weird Toad King and uh, he's got like ra he's got like an army of ravens, and uh, you'll see, probably see me fighting the ravens in the video here. And uh, yeah, you end up joining this resistance against this uh, evil kind of Toad King guy. I think he was a Toad. I can't remember now. And uh, yeah, you, you've got um, you're kind of trying to find a way to defeat him. And one thing that's quite interesting about this game is how the story progresses. Every time you beat a chapter, you've got a cho you've got two choices of uh, what you want to do next, which, which I think determines uh, the next level of the game. So the choices in the game kind of di uh, dictate the story somewhat and where you're going to go next, which is uh, fairly decent. It did kind of add a nice little layer of kind of personalization to the journey, although ultimately it doesn't really matter that much because obviously you know, you've got one of two choices and it doesn't really impact the story that much, but 
It was a nice little touch. And uh, so the game obviously is a kind of top-down little action game. The, com the uh, game's combat is a little bit uh, kind of Batman Arkham kind of style, where you're kind of uh, you know you're tapping the X button to attack enemies, and you have the little exclamation mark above the head, which indicates you can counter them and knock them down. And you can grab enemies, and you can throw them off ledges, and you've got like a little... Um, Oh, what was it? Oh, I can't remember what it was now. You've got a little kind of whip. It's not a whip. It's a chain. You throw out this chain, you can pull enemies towards you like uh, Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat, which is quite nice. The The game's combat is kind of passable. Uh, it was nothing special, at least during the kind of little bit that I played. You know, maybe it gets better later on, because there is a... The game does have a skill tree where you unlock new abilities. Now, we did unlock a few new abilities as I was playing through, so maybe later on in the game, once we unlocked a few more of the abilities, the combat will get a bit more interesting. But it was decent. Uh, the game does have a uh, bit of a crafting system as well. You, you can craft different swords. Uh, as you go through the levels, you yeah, collect items which you can use to craft different swords. So I think they have kind of different abilities as well. And uh, yeah, there are gems you can equip as well, but I didn't actually get any of those during my playtime of the game. Um, so yeah, there's not really a whole lot else to really say about stories, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a fairly straightforward little game, but I had a decent time playing it. Uh, you know, it's just a fairly, fairly straightforward little kind of combat, kind of RP, like kind of light RPG, I suppose. But I think considering the discount, obviously, you know, it is uh, dirt cheap, ninety percent, ninety percent off the ask, uh, you know, the recommended retail price. I think for that ninety percent discount, it's definitely worth checking out because it is, a, it is quite a decent little game. This one, and uh, yes, you know, it's got a pretty decent reception as well. Pretty good reviews on Steam, very positive reviews. So I don't think you can really go wrong with this one. So that's uh, Stories The Path of Destinies on Steam now for 90% off. Pretty decent little game, but nothing too amazing. So for pick number four, I have gone with Fly Wrench. Now this is a game which actually doesn't have a huge discount, it's only 50% off. So it's £5 down to £2.49 or $7 down to $3.49. So not a huge discount, but the game is not that expensive to begin with, so it's not the uh, not that big of a deal. Now, of course, this is a game developed by Messhoff, who are mo more well known for the Nidhogg games, Nidhogg and Nidhogg 2. This is a little game they made in between, and I think this is actually my favourite game out of these five that I picked here. So this game is it's not really a platformer, it's more of like a, we'll kind of call it a platformer just because that's kind of the best way to, to do, uh, describe it, but it's kind of more of an obstacle course really than a kind of platformer because you're not platforming as such, but you're kind of you know, na na navigating your way through these kind of obstacles, playing as this um, this little white line as you can see here. I guess he's a wrench, I guess, because the game's called Fly Wrench. But uh, yeah, the game, you control this little, uh, this little white line. And as you can see, we've got these uh, little obstacles you have to get through, and you kind of change colour. You have to change to the right colour to get through them. So you've got these green ones, you've got uh, white ones, and you've got red ones. And there are um, pink ones as well, you find later, which you die, no, mat no matter what colour you are when you hit them. Now, the reason why I really like this game is because, uh, well, first of all, it's like it's uh, really, really hard, really, really difficult. Uh, so you're going to be dying a lot in this game, but it's one of those games where you're kind of dying over and over again but uh, you know the levels themselves are actually really short you know like a you know 10 seconds long but it'll take you like you know several dozen you know maybe a dozen two dozen tries to actually beat the level at least on these early ones i only played through the first kind of maybe played maybe about 30 levels but there's quite a quite a lot of content in the game which i didn't get to um but yeah the game is like really hard so it's kind of like a it's kind of like a bit like super meat boy-ish kind of game you know where you're playing these really difficult levels but they're really short and you you know you got this kind of instant respawn so when you die you can instantly respawn and kind of get back in there but the reason why i really like this game is because not only are the levels like really well designed but uh it's really satisfying to pull you know when you actually, actually pull off the level complete it's actually really satisfying but also the controls are really really spot on and really responsive so you never you know you're never dying and feeling as though you you know it's your it was um the game's fault that you die it's always your own fault and just the way the uh, the it combines the different gates you can see here, like sometimes you have to change green to red to white really quickly, and uh, each state has a different uh, kind of feel to it. When, when you're kind of green, you kind of bounce all over the place, and uh, when you're red, you can actually flap. As you can see here, once you when you're white, we're kind of flapping, which kind of gets us sends us up in the air. But uh, obviously, you don't want to hit these yellow lines. If you hit the yellow ones when you're white, you will die. 
So yeah, there's not really a whole lot to really say about Fly Wrench, other than it's just a really, really well-made game. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Oh, also the soundtrack in this game is actually fantastic as well. Uh, each world, there's kind of uh, several worlds, and each world kind of has its own track. But uh, yeah, the soundtrack is fantastic in this game. Uh, also, the, the the game's look is quite nice as well. It's kind of got a weird look. Um, Messhoff, they kind of always go for like a kind of a weird art style with all of their games, and this one. Is there's not really that much you can do with it, obviously, because it's you know it's fairly sparse, but it does have a nice look to it, kind of a weird, weirdish kind of look, as you can see here. Now the colours are obviously the colour clashing, the colour kind of clashing of each other is quite striking as well. So that's Fly Wrench, uh, fifty percent, um, fifty percent off on Steam. Uh, well worth a look. It was pretty cheap to begin with, but um, at a fifty percent discount, definitely worth checking out. And uh, yeah, that's Fly Wrench, pretty good. Definitely my favourite of the five of these of these games. So for my fifth and final pick, I have gone with Monochroma. So this is a game which is 90% off on Steam. It is $1.99 down from $20 or £1.49 down from £15. Now this is a game which I picked up mostly because of the steep discount of 90% because the game's kind of got a little bit of a mixed reception. It came out a few years ago actually, so it's a few years old. But it wasn't the kind of best received game when it came out. But I bought it and I played a bit of it. And to be honest, it's okay, this one. Uh, certainly nothing special, but I think considering the large discount, it might be worth checking out. So Monochroma is a... It's basically a puzzle platformer. Uh, it's developed by a studio called Nowhere Studios. And as you can probably gather, the game has a kind of monochrome kind of art style. The game's called Monochroma, and it is kind of inspired by, of course, the classic game Limbo. So you know you play as a young kid, and you've got this little, you've got your brother with you. So you kind of go along solving. You kind of have to carry your brother around, and you kind of use him to kind of solve puzzles as you go. So you're kind of going through the world solving these little puzzles. The puzzles are kind of okay. They're nothing special, really. But you kind of, you know, kind of moving, moving boxes back and forth, kind of um, pulling and you know, pulling and pushing switches in order to kind of move things around. Uh, you know, there's a kind of seesaw puzzle and kind of stuff like that. Kind of your standard kind of puzzles, but they're kind of uh, they're okay to be honest. Uh, I didn't really ever get stuck too badly. They're not really that difficult, but uh, yeah, the puzzles are kind of okay, really. Um, yeah, they're nothing special. The game kind of has a bit of a weird kind of atmosphere as well. It kind of kind of has a little bit of a kind of oppressive kind of atmosphere, and uh, you're kind of in a weird kind of dystopian world as well. well there's there's one uh, area, there's one section of the game where you're being chased, but it kind of leads me to the kind of biggest problem I have with this game is that it kind of feels a bit lifeless, really. Like there's one section where you're being chased by this weird weird person, but you're never really in kind of any danger. You kind of just hold the the uh, stick to the right and just kind of ran away. Didn't really have much consequence. Um, yeah, there's not a ton I can really say about this one really, other than it's just a kind of okay-ish kind of puzzle platformer with a fairly decent kind of look to it. Like I so said, the games have a fairly striking look, and it kind of looks okay. Uh, it's not as good looking as kind of Limbo. Because that uh, this game is a kind of two and a half D. It's kind of has a uh, two and a half D perspective to it. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit annoying to play this game because uh, sometimes you have to you have to carry your brother, but you can only drop him down in a section where it's light. So you kind of have to pick him up, drop him, walk, walk to the puzzle, solve the puzzle, walk back, pick him up again, and you're kind of moving objects back and forth. And it's not really uh, so it kind of get a little bit annoying sometimes because he as an anim any, when you pick the brother up, there's an animation that plays, and you put him down, there's another animation that plays. So it's a little bit uh, uh, cumbersome at times. Kind of moving a brother and moving objects back and forth, but uh, yeah, Monochroma. It is the worst game of the five that I've picked here, but it's not a bad game. It's honestly okay, and considering that it's dirt cheap again, like it's ninety percent off, yeah, it's it's worth a look at least at that price. Obviously, if you if you don't like don't like the game, you can obviously refund it on Steam and get your money back. But I think for one pound forty nine or yeah, it was two dollars. I think for two dollars, yeah, it's worth a look. You could probably get several hours of decent puzzle-solving fun out of Monochroma, to be honest. 
It's not too bad, but it's not that great either. It's just kind of okay. So there you go. That's my uh, five picks for hidden Steam deals for the Steam Winter Sale. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, I think I picked five pretty decent, apart from the last one. I think I picked kind of four pretty good games and one kind of okay game. Um, but yeah, they're all kind of games which are probably flying under the radar a bit because uh, obviously you know Steam mostly promote your big kind of AAA games. They don't really kind of promote these smaller games. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, I've been Jacob. This has been my five hidden Steam deals. You can leave me a like, comment, dislike, or subscribe. Uh, yeah, you can do all that, all that bullshit that people say. And I'll see you in the next video. So, bye for now. Bye.